active recall is one of the best ways to learn something by actively recalling the answer to a question. You could use paper, pen, apps, or in this video I'm going to show you how to use Notion to actively recall information. Hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. Essentially what active recall is, is recalling information that you know. One of the most common and effective ways of doing this is by asking a question and then answering those questions like in a flashcard. The simplest way to do that on Notion is by simply writing out the questions and then putting the answer to the other side of the page. And then when you're going down the questions, if you get the question right, you can turn the text green. If you get it wrong, you can turn it red. Then when you go back to the start, if it's red, you need to go over that question again. If you're like me and you have the answer to the question really close by, you're probably tempted to have a look. Which is what makes flashcards a little bit more useful because you can't see the answer when you have to actively recall it. In Notion there are a few different ways you can actually go about doing this. But first what we need to do is put all the questions and answers into a database. So once you've created your table with your questions and your answers, you can change the view and go into list view. This way you can see all of your questions, but the answers are hidden because you aren't showing the property. Once you've answered all the questions, or you've answered the question, or you're not sure about the answer to a question, you can show the answer. And this is done by going into the menu, going into properties, and then selecting answer because that's the property that you've hidden. You can do the same thing with all of the different database settings, so if we go back to the table setting, we can then toggle the answers on and off. If you want to have questions with multiple choice answers, you can go into that answers property, change it to a multi-select, then you can have two different answers to the same question, or how I would probably use this is having a list of potential answers and then you have to select the right answer, and in that case I probably wouldn't use a multi-select, I would use a select, that way when you click on the box it will come up the options but you've got to select the right answer. Then what you can do is create another column which has the actual answer in, which again you can hide. For me, learning something completely new or being able to differentiate between two different answers that are very, very similar, having multiple choice questions actually lets me do that because I have to pick between all of those options with only one actual answer. Then when I become consistent in answering that question correctly, I can then just get rid of the multi-select and have it as a normal question. Those of you familiar with my channel, you'll probably know that I prefer the gallery view, just out of personal preference. And with the gallery view, there are lots of different ways you could do active recall. You could have the question as the title of the page and have the answer in the page. You could have the page cover showing a question mark or the topic that your question is related to. But in keeping with the flashcard style, what I'm going to do is get rid of the covers. And then I'm going to have the answer to the question inside the page. This means the answers to all the questions are hidden, so I have to actively click on the question to find the answer. This gives you more of a scope with your answers because your answer is a whole page, so you could have an essay in there, you could have images in there, diagrams in there, whatever you want in there. And every time you want to add a question, you can just add in another piece of data into the database. The gallery database does give you the option to show the properties at the bottom of the cards, so if you have a topic specific to each card, you can show the topic. So maybe 1 and 2 are related to a topic, so you can show that topic, and question 3 and 4 are a different topic, so you can have a different label. For me personally, I prefer using templates and emojis to separate different topics. So I can create a template, label it topic 1, and then give it an emoji. Then every flashcard that I have that relates to topic 1, I can just use this template. which means I have an emoji associated to a topic, it just means that the flashcards don't fill out so much space having all the properties showing. Once you've added in a few more questions, a few more answers, and a few more templates for the different topics, 
What I personally do is actually have a property checkbox, which basically says whether I got it right or whether I got it wrong when I was answering my questions and actually doing active recall. So when I'm going through all of my questions and I get something right, I can tick the box and then the database will know that I got that question right. What I can then do is filter the database so that it's not ticked, which means every time I get a question right and I tick the box, it won't show because I got it right. So if you have a massive list of questions that you want to get done, you can just push the tick box and then it will slowly decrease as you get them right and it'll only show you the questions that you either got wrong or you still need to do. Now Active Recall is a great way to learn things, but having a revision timetable is pretty important, otherwise you could have hundreds of questions you need to do each day. So make sure you check this video out for more on that. I'll see you there.